Hello everyone, uh, my name is Aman Yabe. I'm the Managing Director of Protection Plus Services and um, I'm happy to, to be here to talk about my mentor and my chairman. Uh, Mr. King is someone who I met in 1997 at Muson Center House on the Rock, uh, but I never started working with him till 2011. I came into Protection Plus actually as a car hire driver and today I'm the MD of Protection Plus, so um, I don't need to say much about how much impact Mr. King has made in my life, bringing me, taking me from that point and bringing me up to this point that I am. I know he has impacted so many other lives and I believe that um, even in death we would continue to, you know, impact others even as he has impacted us. We would continue to uphold his legacy until we meet to part no more. I'm happy to be one of those that have been greatly, that was greatly impacted by Mr. King and I will carry on this legacy and uphold and defend it. Thank you very much for this time. I wish you all the best. Well, um, working with Obon King, we used to joke around, we gave ourselves a nickname and uh, he would usually call me Don Dante and uh, I'll call him Mentor King. One of my impact story with King is um, exposing me to a level of leadership that comes with responsibility that is far above your capacity. And um, those were grooming moments for me. Uh, King, just like the mother eagle, will take you high up and drop you. And he will watch you, wait for you to spread, spread your wings. And he would come just when you're about to hit the ground. And he would do that again and again. And I experienced that to a very large extent where, looking back now that he's no longer here with us physically, that's the same method I now use to work with a lot of young people that he um, mentored as well. So that's my impact story. The mother eagle and the baby eaglet experience. I wish you a happy birthday, Mentor King. God bless you. Thank you. An eagle does not relate with chickens. If you're an eagle, stop talking to chickens. If you are 20 years old and you are still in your father's house, it's a shame. Hi, everyone. It's Debbie Tutu, Papa's girl. Um, happy posthumous birthday, Papa. Um, sincerely, I honestly don't know what to say, but I just want to say thank you for being you. Thank you for causing all the trouble. That's why I wear this cap, to cause more trouble for you. Um, thank you for loving us. Thank you for pouring yourself into every single person you came across. You believe in everyone. You connected with everyone. You have not met MM, but from the video calls on the pictures, you say, oh, look at my kitty baby. Even Sophie, you spoke with her. Um, in our own way, we'll make you proud. So have fun, cause more trouble there. And I'm just a girl, Debbie Tito, love you. Happy birthday, bye Papa, I love you so much. There was nobody bye. that was born with a golden spoon. Everybody was born naked. Every child in this world. Nobody was born with a silver spoon. You became rich or you became poor. Every child that was born was born with two fears. The fear of a loud sound and the fear of falling down. So if you are poor, you learn to be poor. If you are rich, you learn to be rich. So if you want to change from poverty to riches, unlearn poverty and learn to be rich. Simple formula. Hello everyone. It's that time of the year again where we all come together to celebrate the life of a legend, Mr. Ubong Thompson King. He would be 49 years. We However, we're going to be celebrating it posthumously. Talking about Ubong, I say it a lot of times that um, there's so much I could say about this man. And if I wanted to start talking about Ubong, I would spend, I could spend the whole day just talking about him, having known him that well. I always say that uh, Ubong was one person that the moment you meet him, you leave impacted. And uh, I always use this analogy that being around Ubong is like going to eat in a fancy restaurant. And you know the service is so good, the meals are good, and you end up leaving that restaurant with two things. You leave with an impression, and um, that impression is usually 
the impact that he leaves with you you know and um, you know when the service in the restaurant is so good you either order for an extra uh, takeaway or you live with the memory of the good service in mind so that was Ubon there's no way you get to meet him that you do not live with an impression that's the kind of person that Ubon was and I want to use this opportunity to say a happy birthday to celebrate his life though he's not here with us physically which is the painful part but all the same I know that Ubon King still lives on My name is Marian Agbohan and um, I've known Mr. Obon King for 2011, yes. Uh, he was a wonderful person, wonderful person. He made me, I would say he made me push myself to the level that I am today. Remember then, uh, at the time I wanted to give up, I was really tired and he asked me, you want to give up just like that and allow the enemy to laugh at you? Why not push harder and disappoint them? And that made me push harder, actually. And today, I will say I'm a better version of myself because of him. And I miss him. Yes, I really do. As a, a lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. Uh, 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 there are bigger animals. It's not the tallest animal in the jungle. There are taller animals. For here it is called the king of the jungle. So your academics is not a guarantee for success. Dr. King has been a very great man. He affected my life in so many ways. First, he was my classroom teacher while I was in secondary school. He never knew that until the day I broke the news to him. And apart from that, when I started working with Dr. King, some of the things I never learned in school, uh, he brought it my way. So I think to me, Dr. King has been a university of knowledge. He's impacted my life in so many ways, so, so many ways that I can't really mention all year. However, I just need to put up this story to say he's been a great man. He will never be forgotten. He's impacted my life in several ways. And I want to also use this opportunity to wish him a very happy birthday. Boss, I'm just your boy. When I look at everybody here, I see money. Money. When you go anywhere, what do you see about people? Your next 100 million naira is in this hall. You need to learn to connect the dots. You know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Don't allow people like this go free. Even if it's a young boy, don't get deceived by their height or their size. Be friendly with them. Cultivate. Business is war. Treat it as such. My name is Neddy, Ned Marquee, fondly called Neddy by everybody. And um, my fondest memory of Mr. King was um, the spontaneous lunches he used to call me into his office to have with him and his executive assistant. Um, during those lunches, it wasn't just idle talk we had. We, we had fun. He showed that he cared for us. But at the same time, he gave us advice on different spheres of life. My fondest advice was him asking me one day to close the blinds, that the environment around him was discouraging and not encouraging. And he had a vision. He had a picture he wanted to capture in his head as of that point in time. It was so clear to him that he wanted to document it down while we were eating. Mr. King was not just a visionary to say lightly. He was someone that once he had a picture in his mind, he wanted to see it through to the end. And he wanted to capture that picture literally as well as physically. So from him, I learned a lot. I learned to capture my vision. I learned to pursue my vision. And I learned that all the business principles I need in this life are already in the Word of God. All I have to do is find out where the solution is for whatever problem I'm encountering as of that point in time. How do you wake up and the first thing you are seeing is a going beans? What? How do you wake up and the first thing you see is a keke na pep? You must wake up and provoke your eyes. 
Something must tamper with your brain cells. I had to cut images of things that I wanted to see in my future. When I wanted to buy a Range Rover, I put the pictures of Range Rover black and I said, this is the car I wanted. It is the first thing that I see. By the time I was buying Range Rover, I bought 16 because it had entered into my medulla of Longata. Your poverty is not outside, it's inside. So my I name see. is Lazarus Aldiaka. Um, I work in account department in Protection Plus, but I started with Protection Plus in 2011. That's where I got to meet Mr. King. It's over like 10 years now. And for that period of uh, 10 years, he has imparted into my life greatly. I started as uh, a location supervisor in Protection Plus, but today I'm in account department and um, a whole lot of story that I can't begin to tell, but my late chairman has really, really guided me as a person. One part that I remember is uh, when I was going for my marriage, he gave me a keyword that I never forgot. He said, look, you are getting married. Make sure, no matter what, no matter the situation, no matter what happened, that love for your wife, let it remain there. And that has I've sticking to my, my head. Hello everyone, I had Corporate Services and Protection Plus Services Limited. Talking about Dr. Ubon King, it's a great deal of assignment. He was just about too large to be put into some one minute talk. I worked with him for a span of nine years and above, I think, and <clears throat> his depth of person, the broadness of his character, the way he could flow with anyone, despite the social class or the wealth status or something, that could keep you marveling for a long period of time. He was one who worked whatever thing he said. He worked the path that he chose to work on and he worked with it every sense of authenticity. Um, it's, a, it's a huge loss to us that he's gone now. Truth is, as you go through work every day, you make challenges, you just keep seeing parts of him. Inwardly, I ask myself, how would boss have attended to this? How would he want us to react? And those are the invaluable things I left for us, lessons that we could never quantify. Um, we will see you again someday. Until then, thank you for being who you are, and we look forward to that day. I'm a content manager for PPSL Group. It's been quite an experience um, career-wise for me. And um, during this time, I've had to work with Mr. King closely on, um, on content providing content and um, producing content generally. And during this time, I can say one thing I learned from Mr. King was taking risk. Before this time, I'd been somebody who doesn't take risk. The first lesson I learned from Mr. King career-wise is to take risk. If you fail, your mistakes will be a lesson and um, you move on. So oftentimes, there were times I fell like, um, I would say I fell from the wagon, like um, he would always pick me up with advice and tell me not to beat myself up, just, you know, move on, do better. So one thing I remember, Mr. King, although I have like a river of experiences um, working with him, but then if there's one thing I always remember him by, which has also helped me in so many departments of my life, is taking risks and not being afraid to take risk because like i said before i met mr king i was somebody who always played safe career wise and even business wise and in my life generally i always played safe i played things safe with my money with business and um, my choices in life but mr king actually taught me even verbally give me um like long lessons on taking risks I learned to take risks, so watching him take risks. He was a risk taker. He was not afraid to do things. And I used to be like a very scared person, a scared rabbit team, I want to say. But then he pushed me and, um, you know, the giant in me, I, I just, the giant in me came out just learning from Mr. King, having to look at him, see how he makes his decisions and see how he runs business. So the boldness with which he ran his business, I tapped from that and I learned a lot of lessons from that. And I thank God today I'm a far better person having worked with him, which is something I'm thankful for. So I'm taking that lesson to, you know, take risks. And it really helped me and it's still helping me career-wise still today. As we are moving in this 
new dispensation where we have a lady as our chairman. Anytime we find moments to do things like this, let's not procrastinate. Whatever we say we want to do, if it needs you and the camera, if it needs everybody, just make sure we galvanize ourselves and we do it. Don't push it too much into tomorrow because we can't guarantee what that tomorrow will bring. But today, I leave this moment preparing for this. I can't tell you the joy it gives me. And that joy is what's helping me manage the fact that it is not there. So, this wasn't planned. So don't expect any perfect thing. I just, I just looking at everybody, looking at the chairs, looking at the table, and I remember that WhatsApp conversation. I can it. And if only we knew we're going to have Everybody here would have made sure we did that. Yeah. Like okay. I told my children, you know, because we are human beings and we are on this side, so we'll feel these things. But in the midst of all this, I'm still thankful to God because the um, for me, it's the opportunity that we have to celebrate a man who left a great legacy behind who didn't just pass through this earth unknown no impact but he left a lot of impact and great men do not die they don't die they live on in the ideas that they left behind in the legacy that they left behind and that's the legacy that we are pushing that will not just let that legacy go like i was telling some people on the team i said Ubon King may not be here today and there may have even been people who were envious. Where did this guy come out from? All of a sudden, Ubon King everywhere. Is he the only person? Because let's face it, we are human beings. There are people that will feel that way. And I told them, I said, as long as God gives me breath, they will not see Ubon King. But I will make sure I put Ubon King's voice in all their ears, all over. The, what he lived for, the ideals that he stood for, what he represented. It will not it will not die. I think it was Mark yesterday who said something when we went to decorate the Bon King ambassador. He said something really profound that the world is ruled by spirits. You know, all the great inventions like the aeroplane we are flying, the people who invented it, they are no more. The electricity that we are enjoying was the idea of somebody that has gone, but the legacy continues. So Bon King made an impact in the lives of a lot of people. And even more so after he passed. There are so many things that I didn't even know until after he passed. Because of the feedback, the people, all sorts of strange people were sending me messages. Not just here in Nigeria, all over the world. I was getting a lot of... There's even one time I did a post. I wasn't really like lamenting, you know. I was just thankful. I was just um, reminiscing about certain things. And somebody from the US, I don't know from Adam, just said, Madam, we are here for you and more that you don't even know. We will not even allow you to, to lament. And I wasn't lamenting, you know. It was just I was, it's something I was writing. And it just made me remember something he said to me the last day that we took him to hospital. He said, you and the children will not see shame. So I know that I hold God to that. And in the same vein, I'm saying that none of us here that are, we're connected to him and connected to the vision will see shame. As far as we are connected to that vision, whatever things that he desired for all of us, because he was a leader who was also concerned for the people that he worked with. So whatever he, he expected for us to become, we'll become it, and even more, you know. And in that way, we'll continue to push his legacy and ensure that it continues. So I, I still thank God. I still thank God because when scripture says in everything, give thanks, you can read it and just, it doesn't make sense to you until you actually have to thank God in a situation where you don't feel like thanking him. When life does not make sense to you at all. So that's why we decided at the Bunking Foundation that we'll still mark it. We'll mark, we'll mark his post, humorous birthday. And with so many activities that are still yet to be unfolded, because there are so many things that we are planning. So we unveil one after the other and ensure that like the Miles Moreau of our time, like the Nelson Mandela, like Martin Luther King, all those great people, 
you know he will be remembered like that you know that name will not just go down he will be remembered because he came here on an assignment and to the best of his ability you know of course like every other human being he wasn't perfect and and um we are all humans and we also have our shortcomings but despite that despite that limitation of being human he did his best and his best is good enough and it's also a challenge to us because you shouldn't feel like um i have enough time to become what i need to become to do the things that i need to do i was listening to somebody um priscilla um priscilla she acted war room and she said something which i kept playing on my whatsapp status over and over again she said that if you are meant to live on earth for only 30 years and you've already lived 20 years of those and you've not achieved what you're supposed to achieve and you think you have time you don't have time you have just 10 years left and we don't know how many years god gave us at the end of the day because one of the things god opened my eyes to see in this season is that we count time like human beings it's human beings that are saying it was only 48 it was young untimely death and all of that and i laugh when people say that nonsense because the bible says that a day with god is like a thousand years so we are the ones saying 48 years god doesn't count time for us like that even a baby a, a friend of us said something really profound he said even a baby that was born today and died today had a purpose maybe the purpose god sent that baby into that family was to tell that woman that maybe the woman was barren or something to tell her that look you can still father i mean you can still birth a child and that child comes and that child goes so all of us have our assignments and i think one of the things that has, this, this has really made me conscious of is to is, is to live life conscious of the fact that i am here on an assignment and it's important it's imperative whether you want to go and do fasting and pray and god what did you send me here on earth to do because that's what matters at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you live there are people that if you live to be a hundred and you never fulfill purpose believe me it's a life wasted you just wasted your existence here there's a reason why each person is here there's an assignment that is specific to you even if a million people do that thing there's a way you would do it that as far as you've not done it in god's estimation is not done yet so for me ubon king discovered purpose many many times privately you know when we we'll talk about it with him he will just um, go down memory lane how far god has brought us. and he was somebody that as formidable and as um as as tough as he seemed he was a very soft-hearted person you know and he would cry he will he will, he would tell me that when he looks at how far god has brought us he was just like counting his blessing he was somebody that was always always grateful to god and he said it all the time he said he was a fulfilled person so it may be painful to us but he left this earth fulfilled he left this earth fulfilled and it's something that he even said to somebody in church 11 days before he left he said if i die today if i die today <laughs> i am fulfilled that's what he said to the person that person told me that thing after he passed 11 days after he passed that if i drop dead today i am fulfilled I know that my wife and my children will not suffer because I've raised people. And in his last um, speaking assignment in Calabar, he said it which we captured on video because somebody sent that voice note to me. They didn't record the videos. Somebody sent it to me and he said, when I die, don't cry for me. Don't try that rubbish because I'm going to leave so much legacy online. I'm going to live forever. And I laughed. I said, this is typical him. If he had an opportunity to appear here now, he will and sees anybody crying he's even he will even scold you for crying he doesn't expect it well of course you can't blame yourself or anybody who breaks down because we are human beings and that's why i don't even tell my children don't cry i tell them cry if you want to cry cry because you're a human being so there's no need doing superwoman and superman <laughs> you know so but in all of this let it be a challenge to all of us let his life be a challenge to all of us that i have an assignment i'm here on purpose i need to find out what is that assignment and work in it so that at the end of the day when my time is up on this earth i'm happy and i'm fulfilled i don't go to the grave with all the dreams all the rich deposits that god put inside me i don't go to the grave with that. that he has left behind whatever dreams he had 
for us as individuals and for the company as a whole we are going to be his hands extended to ensure that we stretch and we we exceed that expectation i think that's the greatest thank you that we can do for him and by the grace of god god helping us we're already already on course god will help us to continue to push and push ahead so even as we are feeling sad let us also be happy let us also be happy because at the end of the day he's with his maker and that's why we had the theme home with the king of kings that's the theme god gave me home with the king of kings god just told me look i'm the one that sends him here and i want him back you don't love him more than i do so no matter how much i loved him as a husband he had a maker who loved him even more and the love you can't even compare the love god has for him with human love there's no basis for comparison so the one who wanted him said i want him back so you can't tell me he's only 48 he's a small he's a young person he has not even done the things he, he needed to do and all of that he's us thinking that way he's us thinking that way so thank you for the support thank you for holding my hands up and the way we support each other and my admo admonition to us is that we should continue to do our best to be there for each other to do the things that we are supposed to do and at the end of it we'll look back one year later two years later we'll look back to these times and just be thankful to god just be thankful the missing is a process it will, that one so jesus comes we're always missing you know but as we miss him we also know that we have something that we, we have a mission to also accomplish and god will help us to accomplish it in jesus name yeah. 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 thank you good afternoon everyone good afternoon and this is going to be a very good ceremony and this is how we're going to go please i'm going smile i'm really very uncomfortable with all the long faces i'm seeing i understand the but then we are here to celebrate well, if he was here, I'm not sure we were in And any gift that you think you would have given him, please, I'm available. You can give it. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me, I'm collecting on his behalf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is posthumous for tonight's birthday, and we are celebrating his life and time. Also, we would like to say a few words. It's been seven months we living without a father. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's been a very tough one because it was very much unexpected. But today we're going to celebrate his life because we've been through so much with him and this is not a moment to be sad or anything. It's a moment to just look back at things and just smile about it because he would have been 49 today. And I know that he's listening to this, so I'm just going to say this. Happy birthday, daddy. I love you to the moon and back. And... I know you're enjoying yourself in heaven so i just want to tell you that i love you and i'll call forever love you and i miss you so much that's it living without you has been hard but like wow we're taking it one day at a time well things things are be becoming better we've celebrated a lot of things when you were gone but we are we are getting there we're getting there and mom is doing a very very good job awesome job if you're listening we we miss you and we promise to keep your legacy. Happy birthday, Daddy. I want to start off by saying I love you and we all miss you. These past few months that you have not been with us, it has been hard. It has been with like a mix of emotions for everybody. It can be hard, it can be happy sometimes, sometimes it can be sad. I won't lie. I won't lie, sometimes I can break down at some point, remembering all the times we spent together. But after a few times, after a few moments, I realized that you are not gone. You are just with us, but your physical body is not with us, but you are always there. I want to say that I love you, and yes, we are going to take care of mommy for you, and we can't wait to see you again. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. I love you and I miss you. Today is your 49th birthday and I love you. Even though you're not here right now, we are still, you know, enjoying and having fun. And 
and we are taking care of mommy for you we miss you we love you and if you are seeing this video i miss you very much happy birthday daddy happy birthday daddy. happy birthday daddy happy birthday in the book of joshua chapter 2 verse 1 joshua said send two boys from the land of shitty from the family of Shittim to go into the land of Jericho to spy the land. God will not give you a new instruction until you obey the last one. It's that time of the year where we come together to celebrate you, King Ubon King. Um, unfortunately, this time we're celebrating the life that you lead. Today you are you are supposed to turn forty nine, but yeah you've gone to um be with the king of kings and it is it has been very tough for me to make this video but um well i eventually had to because um you know it's bittersweet um and when i say it's bittersweet you know it's sweet because of you know what you left your family your wife and your kids it's sweet to know that they are alive and they're going to continue your legacy and we will support them and um it's better because you know obviously we wouldn't we would have wanted you to be around for us to celebrate your 49th birthday but um who who are we to question god you're obviously in a better place away from the chaos in the country in the world right now you know and like i said we are so sure you're in a better place and you've gone to be with the king of kings uh... hi everyone um it's so unfortunate that uh, we have to do this today um just doing it for my should i say my late no because kings don't die kings they live forever so i'm just doing this for my friend my boss my mentor uh of um, king who by the way of nature is not here today but we still have to celebrate him um i could remember how our journey started he has been a very special kind of person to me i could remember my first meeting with him in lagos at the ais conference um when he told me, guy, you have so many potential in you, I want you to work with me. And that was how my journey started with him. I can remember one of the days um, here in Portacot. I was driving to the market with my wife. And King called me. Hi, Austin. I said, hey, boss, what's up? He said, where are you? I said, boss, I'm going to the market with my wife. He said, meet me in my office by 2 p.m. I was like, boss, I'm in Portacot. He said, yes, I know. What is the time? I said, this is to 11. He said, yes. The distance between Portacot and Lagos is 45 minutes. Immediately, I just turned my vehicle and moved straight to the airport. There was no flight ticket, nothing. Then on my way to the airport, I was, I was making calls. I didn't travel to Lagos with any clothes. I didn't go anywhere. Um, 1.30, everything happened 1.30. I got to Lagos and I called him. I said, boss, he said, where are you? First time in Lagos. He said, he smiled on the phone and then he said, I'll see you tomorrow. He didn't see me that day. I was like, <laughs> what the why all the rush and all that. But when he saw me the next day, he was like, that was your first test. And then you passed it. And I was like, wow. He now sat me down in his office. He said, yeah, your brother told me that you won't be spending time with me here and but i told him that i want you to stay with me so that was why i called you down to lagos i want you to work with me i want you to stay with me and i promise you you will never regret working with me i want to mentor you i want to make you great i see a great potential in you so i want you to stay with me and that was it that was how my journey with king started and it's been one glorious journey it's been one successful journey it's been one great journey the cattle on a thousand journey. mountain belongs to our god 
the silver and the gold belongs to him. Where am my ego? I have never met a... I've worked in several places and when I met Ubon King, he, the way he, he talked with us, because we actually did, the, there was this induction he does, and the way he, he talked, and I was like, what kind of a boss is this? He, he makes you feel comfortable. He makes you feel like um, is, there's this relationship of this bossy, bossy thing was not his thing. So, and for me, that actually made me see the whole boss and um, staff thing differently. So, and over the, over the years, while working with him, I became very close to him that I actually became his office office person that anytime he, he, he wants to eat he'll definitely call on Linda it has always been me he'll tell me Linda you know what I want to eat you know so and anytime his wife comes to the office he'll tell me Linda get my wife something anytime he has visitors he's always like Linda sort my my my, my visitors out so that way we became so close and we became more like even when my when I lost my mom and even during my wedding. For me, I knew Ibom King more as um, a leader, as someone that motivated me to excel in life. Because I followed him greatly online. I was like an avid follower of his posts and his ideals. And those ideals shaped a major part of my life. There's one of his sayings that I mean I hold so dearly and I has been like a guide for me throughout life because he says that when it comes to learning anything new, all you have to do is ensure that you devote at least one hour every day to that thing and before you know it, you'll be a master at it. This is one thing that I imbibed from just um, listening to him say these words and I will say everything that I have put myself to and everything that I have, in terms of knowledge, everything I've acquired is as a result of him imbibing in me the spirit of excellence and I'm really really honored that I'm now part of his team I mean and I pray that his legacy would live on even from generation to generation known as pilot one of PPSA happy to work with Mr. King the chairman of PPSA and Uber King Foundation I just want to expatiate a little about my achievement from Mr. King. Uh, first of all, he was an open door in my life. He helped me be behave mature in, in the area of my specialization as a pilot and PPSR. I eat with him all the time on the same table. Uh, he's a person who turned mistake into uh, lesson. A pressure into um, uh, uh, productivity and skills into strength. He always attend to my needs, so uh, he, he gave me smart advice always. So I'm very grateful and I'm thankful. Two weeks before he died, he came to the office and he was like, he came to our own office, account office. He was like, ah, I'm in a good mood. How is everybody and all that. And we are like, ah, sir, thank God, this is why you are in a good mood today. Should we bring voucher? So he said, no, bring voucher for me. No, that cannot be. Give me pen and paper. So he wrote some amount of money and gave our CFO to give us. And that day, we were like, ah, that day was, <laughs> it was a wonderful day because we went home with huge money, huge amount of money. And it was very painful when we heard of his death the, uh, the following week. Um, it was unbelievable. He's a very wonderful man. He's a nice boss. He's a very good motivator. I'm so happy to work with Protection Plus. In fact, it's even because of him that made me to stay in Protection Plus till today. I've not stayed in a company for long the way I've been in Protection Plus. When I heard about his death, it was so painful. Obon King is a man of caliber. He has helped so many people, most especially me. 
because I'd known him right from when I was a kid. Uh, Bongi, as we always call him in Maryland, then he has always been that energetic and should I say he has been driven by passion for everything good in life, and he impacted in my life so much that even when I even got married, he asked me. He said he wanted to see the woman that corrected my head. <laughs> that was very funny because he came to my house and he was like. Perry, you have done well for yourself. And he prayed for me that I will keep excelling in the future. And here I am today. His prayers are working for me. And everything is going well. I thank God I knew him. I thank God I came across him. Uh, I worked with uh, Mr. Obon King closely. Um, I was acting as more of his PA slash account person when he was the chairman for ASUS. He's a very good man, a man with a big heart. A man very principled, very giving. Let me, should I also say he's, he was, uh, he was a man who was ready to help you through every problem that you presented to him. You know, he was just a man with a big heart, with a big heart. That's all I can say. The days leading up to my husband's um, first Posthumous 49th birthday I have been full of emotions, mixed feelings, you know, but also so many activities that we did to remember his memory and his legacies because as long as there is life, the things he stood for, his legacy, his ideas, the principles he lived by, will continue to push ahead with that. And I want to say thank you to everybody out there from the depths of my heart for joining with me to celebrate this great man who walked this earth. I thank everybody from all the corners of the world. They've been such an outpouring of um, activities. We've had the lip sync, um, TikTok challenge, video challenge rather, and um, people have sent in entries, people have sent in impact stories. And I want to say thank you to all of you. I appreciate you. And I also especially appreciate my team here at Protection Plus Services Limited Group for the, the uh, encouragement, for standing with me, because there's only so much you can do alone. And like I, I love to say, one tree cannot make a forest. So it takes a lot of trees before you can even talk of a forest. So I want to thank all the great trees in protection plus services limited group for standing with me to ensure that the protection plus forest thrives despite the unexpected departure of our chairman and um, i also thank the people behind the camera thank you i appreciate what you do i thank the thinkation e-team media group led by mark idiahi Thank you for all you do to ensure that his words are not forgotten online. Those words, those things he used to say, those principles that he lived by, people continue to hear them online as a result of what you do. And I also want to thank everybody in the Obon King Foundation, the, the, the team that put everything together because we tagged it Code 22. Code 22 is just simply his birthday, which is August 22nd. You know, so I thank the entire team at the Bunking Foundation. You know yourselves, Alvin, Ayo, Neddy, Debbie, Mark, and of course, we have the trustees of the foundation, Chris Aluta and um, Ama. Thank you too for ensuring that this first posthumous birthday celebration was easier than it should have been. You know, so I'm grateful. God bless all of you. and. My prayer for you is that you will never lack hands to hold yours up at a time in your life when you're really down and you need people, you need that encouragement. I want to thank my children, Adora, Jamon, Atara and Sarah. I think they're the bravest children in the whole world because of the way they have carried on even after their father left. You know, they, they've exhibited such strength and that strength also strengthens me. I thank my mom for the encouragement for her prayers it would have been tougher otherwise and i thank my siblings 
Uto, Alvin, a character, a compass, and see the bear, Uduak, a basifreke, Frances, and a host of other friends. Trust me, I would need to list all of them in a jota to be able to say thank you. And this video might end maybe in a week's time if I want to start mentioning everybody. So I want to say thank you. And of course, I also thank my brother. I don't want to call you my brother-in-law for Nime, you're like a brother. I want to thank you for the way you have stood by me and the children in honoring your brother's memory. God bless you. And you never lack help. I want to thank him more my other brother also and his mom you know for the support in ensuring that ubon king's legacy continues and is not forgotten ubon king may not be here today but we have a lot of things lined up to ensure that the things he stood for his content does not go extinct so watch out you're going to be seeing a lot of content coming from the ubon king foundation we have some um, courses, educational courses based on the content that he created when he was here coming up. You're going to see emails from us with lots of information. So if you are subscribed to our mailing list, watch out. And if you've not yet subscribed, follow us on our platforms. You're going to see information where you can um, join in on what is happening and um, we are going to be releasing a lot of things his books books that he had written that had not yet been published books that are drawn from the content the great content that he left behind which still speaks even when he's not here anymore so watch out watch our platforms and you'll be amazed at what is going to be churned out thank you for being a part of code 22 i appreciate your